Dear students, this is Therese Bushra Kamil, Associate Professor of Pediatrics, Ain Shams Medical School. I will speak to you today about another chronic respiratory illness, which is bronchiectasis. We'll discuss together the etiology, pathogenesis, and how to diagnose such a case of bronchiectasis. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to define bronchiectasis, identify what causes bronchiectasis and underlying mechanisms, be able to diagnose clinical picture and, uh, and description of bronchiectasis, be able to apply acquired knowledge on virtual case scenarios and the clinical situations in face-to-face -face session. What is bronchiectasis? It is from its name, bronchi, it means bronchial tree, ectasis means dilatation. So it is chronic dilatation of the bronchi associated with inflammatory destruction of the bronchial and peribronchial tissue with accumulation of oxidative separative material in the bronchi. So it is separative lung disease. It is a, a vicious circle in its pathogenesis. The triggering factor, which is the lung inflammation, causing mucus production with decreased def uh, cellular defense mechanism and the chemical defense mechanism uh, uh, coming out. This causing pulmonary defense mechanism can be in, uh, inefficient with chronic lung infection, increased mucus production and inflammation. So mucus will be retained, mucus plugging and airway obstruction, more lung damage and more inflammatory response. And again, more inflammatory response will cause chronic infection, mucus production, and uh, etc. So we have persistent nicotizing infection, obstructive secretion and damage, very bronchial uh, uh, fibrosis. This causes traction and ectasia of the bronchial tree, causing bronchiectasis. So the etiology can be defined for, uh, uh, into three main categories. Categories that causes common chronic infection organisms, like Bortadella pertussis, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, strep pneumonia can cause, and staph aureus can cause. The other category is related to immune deficiency syndromes, congenital like antibody defects, or severe combined immune deficiency, which is called SCID, or acquired immune deficiency in HIV uh, infection or following chemotherapy. In some syndromes like ataxia telangiectasia, which is a syndrome with ataxia and decreased immune uh, antibody production, immunoglobulins production. The uh, other category is causes of stasis. So we, we, we dealt with causes of infection, causes of immune deficiency, and causes of stasis, causing bronchial obstruction like foreign body aspiration, tumors, lymph node enlargement, congenital airway defect, or can, could be functional stasis like cystic fibrosis, chronic aspiration syndrome, primary ciliary dyskinesia. So what a classification of bronchiectasis is based on pathological appearance of the uh, bronchial tree in, th in such a disease. Can be cylindrical if it is cylindrical in shape, can be varicose if it is tortuous like that, or cystic if they are forming cyst formation. This is a pathological uh, gross uh, classification. The clinical feature of a patient with bronchiectasis is cuffed with mucoperiodontic exp exp expectoration more than six weeks. The, the patient will have copious amount foul smelling sputum. They may have hemopsis. Of course, they are breathlessness. They have got fever because of chronic infection. The uh, characteristic appearance of the, these symptoms is posture variation. If I have got, if the patient have got uh, post, uh, basal bronchiectasis, he will got the symptoms and expectoration of a lot of amount of sputum if he. Pro, uh, uh, lying prone, leaning forward. Okay, if he has got bronchiectasis in the upper uh, right loop, he is having his symptoms. If he uh, is leaning, uh, uh, lying down on his left side, he may have chest pain. Of course, when I examine this patient, I will find poor general condition. He has chronic infection. 
tachypnea. Dyspnea with using of accessory mus uh, muscles of respiration, intercostal muscles, uh, subcostal uh, muscles, uh, uh, suprasternal muscles. You have got clubbing, and uh, any of the breath sounds can be found. Harsh with prolonged expiration, coarse leathery cracks if the alveoli are, are affected, sepia truncae if there is uh, hyperreactive airways because of the uh, sputum uh, inside the bronchi. If I'm suspecting that, Bronchiectasis. I will do for the patient chest X-ray. If there is fine intensity of bronchiectasis, I will do for him the gold standard for diagnosis, which is high resolution CT or low dose helical CT. And remember, any respiratory symptoms not responding for antibiotics, I must exclude tuberculosis. So I will have for him sputum acid fast bacillizel Nelson staining for two samples. Sputum biogenic gram negative stain, sputum culture and sensitivity for biogenic infection and for Lovenstein culture for TB, chest x ray and uh, uh, high resolution CT chest are the gold standard, and I will do for him bronchoscopy to see what's inside the bronchi. This is the cylindrical, just you see here, there is opacity basal, okay. By CT, there is cylindrical dilatation of the bronchi, and this is a very go very costly. I will see here opacification. I will de define very costly in from the CT. It is the cold gold standard, okay? Cystic from the CT also. What I will find uh, as a sign in CT suggestive of bronchitis? What's called signet ring sign? It's like a ring with signet uh, above signet ring uh, sign or what's called tram track sign or what is called finger in glove sign cystic bronchitis it is obvious and apparent can be honeycombing appearance in CT what are the complications of bronchitis in uh, children Local complication can uh, this uh, uh, separative material can erode uh, vessels causing hemopsis. It is a stasis of secretion causing secondary bacterial infection or fungal infection can be uh, a site for TB activation. It is local immunity uh, have been decreased, lung abscess, and frequent exacerbation. What about systemic uh, complications? This child can result in respiratory failure core pulmonary with second right-sided heart failure, pulmonary artery hypertension, they, ha they could have sinusitis, they could have allergic pulmonary aspergillosis, aspergilloma, brain abscess, and secondary amyloidosis. Remember, secondary amyloidosis from chronic suppuration can cause amyloidosis, especially amyloidosis kidney, causing nephrotic syndrome. Can be edematous secondary to that. How would we treat such patient, patients? Oral and IV antibiotics according to sputum culture and sensitivity. I must give for them uh, bronchodilators if they have sepia and bronchi and hyperreactive airways, mucolytics to dissolve these secretions, and of course, and the most important, chest physiotherapy to drain this retained secretion and deep breathing exercises to help them to drain their secretion. Remember, there are syndromes associated with bronchiectasis, what's called Cartagena syndrome. It is bronchiectasis with situs inverse totalis. I will see the liver on the left side, the heart on the right side, okay, and the spleen on the right side. It is inverse and the stomach on the right side with sterility and sinusitis. And what's called Young syndrome, it is a syndrome with sinusitis as spermia with bronchi. Now test your knowledge with me, please. We have 11-year-old boy admitted with increased in cough, fever, sputum production. He gives a history of repeated infections and pneumonias since childhood. Routine labs are normal except for a polymorph nuclear leukocytosis. Chest radiographs is shown beside. So please describe the picture. What is the most likely diagnosis? What investigations would you need next? This will be discussed 
uh, together in face to face session please be ready with your question in the next face to face session thank you